Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're gonna have some fun in the play queue with Slime Against Humanity and the deck can have any number of cards named Slime Against Humanity so that's why we're playing 24 copies total. This 3 mana sorcery creates a 0-0 green ooze creature token with trample and we get to put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it where X is 2 plus the total number of cards we own in exile and in our graveyard that are either oozes or are named Slime Against Humanity. Now we're not playing any other oozes in the deck even though Slogurk was a consideration instead we're going all in on slime against humanity so the goal is to hopefully already make a large ooze token on turn three by discarding or milling some copies on turn two which we can do in a multitude of ways starting with founding the third path which can of course mill four cards if we start from chapter two but ideally we start from chapter one where we get to cast an instant or sorcery with mana value one or two from our hand without paying its mana cost which could include picklock prankster's adventure where we mill four cards and then put an instant or sorcery or even a fairy from among those cards into our hand so that can already put some copies of slime in the graveyard then we also have cathartic pyre which we could cast on turn two discarding up to two cards so we can maybe discard two slimes and then draw two cards or we can also use it as a removal spell if needed and then of course we also have hearth elemental which is the more exciting one if we discard our hand and then draw two cards we could discard up to five copies of slime against humanity into our graveyard and that's an excellent way to set up a large token on turn three of course we still need to draw additional copies of slime against humanity and make sure we can hit our land drops so it doesn't come without risk but the the nice thing about Hearth Elemental is that we can also cast it as a cheap 1 mana 4 5 most of the time since it gets a discount from each instant sorcery or adventure card in our graveyard so it also tracks other copies of Hearth Elemental as well as the Picklock Prankster. So on turn 4 we can often cast a large Slime Against Humanity as well as cast a 1 mana Hearth Elemental so we can kind of get on the board quickly so we don't fall behind if our opponent has a removal spell. And then the final chapter of Founding also lets us replay an instant or sorcery from our graveyard. And then since we exile and then cast it, it, it doesn't shrink down our Slime Against Humanity count. And of course, it also tracks the number of copies in exile. So it's also not going to shrink down future copies of Slime Against Humanity. So that's also pretty nice. So that's essentially our game plan. And then to help fill the graveyard even more, we're playing eight of the new surveil lanes, four copies of Thundering Falls and four copies of Hedge Maze. And since we don't have anything going on on turn one anyways, it's perfect to play these. So the largest token we can theoretically make in this deck, I believe is a 12-12 on turn three, if we start with a surveil lands milling slime against humanity, and then a turn two founding, cast a free hearth elemental, discarding five copies of slime from our hand. And then on the following turn, we mill four more copies with our second chapter. And then we can already make a 12-12 token with Slime Against Humanity with 10 copies in the graveyard. Now that's very unlikely to happen, but it kind of showcases the theory behind this deck of wanting to make a large token on turn three, as opposed to spending turn three on, let's say, a tunnel grinder to discard our hand and then draw, since that could, of course, give us a bit more card advantage, but makes the deck a lot less explosive and in a format as fast as today's standard you need to be able to get on the board quickly so you don't get run over so that's kind of the idea behind the deck and then besides our surveil lands we have some other dual lands of course the pain lands which are important to cast our two drops on curve as well as copper line gorge another nice land to play early and then a two copies of rockfall veil vale as another untapped red green land since we mostly need blue and red mana in the early turns and then later we only need green mana to cast slime against humanity so rockfall veil vale is perfect there so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw with a keepable hand founding used the prankster and then start sliming the opponent And mill another slime, perfect. We'll have to watch out for Field of Ruin. So I don't know if I want to expose my only red source. We've got plenty of slimes in hand, so we wouldn't mind finding a way to discard them. And sadly we can't pick Hearth Elemental, but we can pick Cathartic Pyre. So we already have three slimes in graveyard, and we're about to mill four more. A 
our opponent's playing with a few caves here. Alright, milled another slime. Yeah, I guess it's worth going for already. As opposed to discarding two and then starting to make slimes. Or oozes. Second Spelunking, opponent still ramping. And gaining four. And now an invasion of Zendikar. So our opponent's gonna untap with a ton of mana. And I guess with Spelunking the lands enter untapped so they can still glimpse. So their opponent's going off. Just gotta hope they have all ramp and no payoff. And then we could cast Slime against Humanity using the final chapter now. I guess that's okay. Since Slime against Humanity still counts the number of copies in exile. So it doesn't shrink down our future slimes. And we did mill another one. So next turn we can both Pyre and Slime. Cosmium Confluence can find more caves or turn caves into creatures. Okay, and I guess our opponent can go discovering now. We see Sky Turtle, another Spelunking. They're out of lands, it seems. Okay, so we'll attack. Pyre. And slime. Nice 10 10 token with trample. What can our opponent come up with? Looks like a big X spell, as our opponent needs to select multiple targets, it seems. Might be the new X spell from the latest set. Yep, doppelgang. Although, sadly, as they find out here, our tokens are just 0, zero with lots of counters on them, so copying our ooze with Doppelgang did not really work out. Now Spelunking can gain them some life back, but is it enough? So yeah, the hidden advantage of the ooze token is good against Doppelgang. So our opponent still has 5 mana, another Confluence, but uh, they seem to be in trouble here. And a Shigeki. GG's. Could even clear it with a Cathartic Pyre. Could do so after blockers are declared since we get to trample over. But there's no real need. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we've got a keeper. Question is, do we... Adventure Hearth Elemental on turn 2. And then hope to just draw land plus slime against humanity. Opponent with an analyst. And yeah, it looks like we're playing the mirror match. Opponent with their own slime against humanity. So knowing that we're playing a mirror, it's all about just dumping as many slimes in the graveyard early as possible. Since otherwise they're gonna get outclassed. So we could Prankster, Adventure, wait a turn, and then next turn we can Hearth Elemental and cast a 4-5. Kind of like that idea. So our opponent makes a 3-3. Three, three. And so that's nice. Grab a Pyre. We could already make a 4-4 if we'd like. Which is an option. Make a 4-4, and then next turn we can surveil, discard more to Hearth Elemental and cast it. Or I can just adventure now and cast it. And then any slimes we draw are gonna be pretty large. Yeah, let's just go big. So I do wanna play my land. Alright, 
drew one slime against humanity. So that's an 8 8. And then now we're happy to draw more. Opponent surveils a forest and makes a 4 4 token. May as well surveil first. I actually kind of want to just draw the slime here. Even though we could have made this one bigger. So now the player who's attacking is going to be kind of at a disadvantage since our opponent can line up some favorable blocks. Opponent surveils. And yeah, they still don't have as many slimes in graveyard as we do. Okay, so do I attack with my 8-8, put on double blocks, we can take out their 5-5. Five five. Doesn't seem all that great. Let's just make another large token. Next turn we can deploy our flyer, which can also chip in. And then we would love to top deck another hearth elemental. Another slime I'll keep. I could certainly consider attacking with a 9-9 token since a double block from their largest ones would still result in a trade. And that unlocks our other creatures to start attacking as well. Should have attacked before playing out my hand. Just to give them less information, opponent does accept the double block. Okay. Analyst could get a bunch of lanes back. Which will now maybe enable them to cast multiple slimes from hand and overtake us. Fair enough. Well, at least our opponent's down to one card in hand. And I still feel like we have the tools in our deck to eventually overtake the opponent once again. With Hearth Elemental drawing two cards, essentially. Prankster potentially milling more slimes. And then if we find our Saga, we can also mill more, as well as cast a slime from the graveyard. So yeah, our biggest slimes are now the same size, and there's Hearth Elemental, perfect. A little adventure. And what do we want to do with Cathartic Pyre? Could hold it, although playing the surveil land still feels pretty useful. Dig towards our next slime. Another cathartic pyre, doesn't seem needed. So now we want to go back on defense. And we have to watch out that our opponent can just attack with everyone and kill us. Because that's certainly a concern now. They've got a lot of power and toughness on the battlefield. And a Mirex, which can make some 1-1s. One Jetsam, okay. Each opponent mills 3, and then they can cast a spell from each opponent's graveyard. Well, that's pretty good in the mirror match. Although if they mill slime, they will make our future slimes bigger as well. Okay, they've got an 11-11. Do we see an attack? We do. So, block the 9-9 with our 10-10. And then the 8-8 with a pair of 4-5s. Eat a 7-7 for free. And then take 10. We'll be at 8. Yeah, I mean, that's probably still our best bet. Although now we're facing a 10-10 and an 11-11. -11. Founding was a good draw. So I should probably just start from the final chapter, so we can immediately cast another slime. Okay. 
which will now outclass the opponents. And get in for one. Okay, so we're still in the game. Both players are now top decking. Opponent does get to make a 1-1 every turn. So that's potentially a concern. But I'm hoping we have a bit more card advantage throughout. Another slime. 11-11. And no attacks. Okay, Hearth Elemental. So we can pyre a 1-1 one, one, or maybe a 3-3 three, is better. And then Adventure, play Hearth Elemental. And then if I draw a land and a slime I can cast it. Otherwise I might be better off just foregoing Cathartic Pyre so I can immediately cast a slime. That might be safer. Or I guess we could have not cast the Hearth Elemental, that was an option too. Find two more slimes. Prankster attacks. So the game's probably not gonna be decided by Picklock Prankster getting in for one repeatedly. At some point Someone's going to have kind of the overwhelming board presence and attack with everyone. Another Prankster's excellence. Find a slime. So yeah, it's nice to see a different approach to the deck. And kind of seeing the head to head. We were off to a slightly more explosive start. Then the opponent kind of uh, took over for a second, thanks to the analyst giving them more mana, letting them deploy all those slimes. And then now, as the board has stalled out a bit, we're seeing more adventure creatures once again pulling ahead. So we have to wait and see here if we're at a point where we can attack with everyone to present lethal. With two more slimes coming up. It might be time to start attacking. So they've got about 40 toughness. Question is, can our opponents survive and attack back for the win? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we go all out. with two more slime tokens coming up. This maybe makes it so our opponent cannot profitably double block some of our creatures and has to chump instead. And of course the mites cannot block, so those aren't a concern. Opponents figured out some decent blocks, but they're still taking 20. I guess 28 even. So yeah, those double blocks are not going to work. This is still lethal. Alright, I'm pretty happy with this attack. We're probably still trampling for lethal. If not, it's going to be pretty close. But yeah, opponent falls to minus 8. And we still had double slime in hand. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we're missing green mana. Do have double pyre to discard double slime. And then Prankster can mill some more. Yeah, I guess this is reasonable. Can keep a green source on top if we surveil it. Another Prankster. Yeah, I think we would rather just draw a green source. Turn one adaptive, so we're point on green aggro. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pyre discarding double slime. Most likely here. Since that way we're 
more likely to draw our green source on turn 3. The Sharp-Eyed Rookie, also potentially a good target for Cathartic Pyre. Alright, there's our green mana, although it's tapped. So now I could be convinced to just take out the Rookie, as opposed to discarding more slimes. Surveil another one into the graveyard, that's nice. So we've got three copies in the graveyard, so we make 5-5 five, five ooze tokens. I guess I should just take out the rookie in case they have a protection spell. And then next turn, maybe make a 5-5. Five, five. Drawing an untapped land would also maybe let us cast a 1-mana hearth elemental, which isn't too bad. Scribe Gorger, we don't actually care about since Slime against humanity in exile still counts. So this will set up our defenses. Now of course it can make it more expensive to cast Hearth Elemental, but we should be able to keep up. Had our opponent used Boseju on our land, then we're also allowed to get the new Surveil lands, since they have the basic land type. Sentinel a 3-4. But yeah, our 5-5 five is doing a good job. And they're only going to get bigger. Now the main concern would be our opponent ramping out uh, Nissa and just overrunning their entire team. And a Bloomkin can also maybe keep up with our ooze tokens. So yeah, that does not affect our slime against humanity, luckily. As we draw another one. Okay, so we've got an interesting choice here, just make another large token versus trying to make a big play with either Hearth Elemental or maybe Prankster. I think we just make another token and then hope to draw a land soon. Need to account for a potential removal spell as well. Invoke the Ancients, making a pair of 4-5s. So yeah, I mean, the board is manageable. But as I've said, a Nissa could uh, help the opponent go over the top. For now, they don't have any good attacks. They could maybe explore and make adaptive a 5-5. Five, five. So it can trade for our 6-6. Six, six. Goes on the Bloomkin instead, revealing another Sentinel. They're not interested, and the land is good, so we could just play one mana Hearth Elemental, play another Slime as a 7-7, seven, seven. I think that's the safest play. And then Prankster can maybe help grow the last copy or find another one. So it's a bit of a staring contest right now. If our opponent draws another Bloomkin, they can first disguise it to get more lands out of it. And yeah, there's Nissa. That's exactly the card we did not want to see. So we could just be dead here. Five forests on the battlefield. Opponent's going to minus seven. They probably did the math. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much we can do. Let's count up the total trample damage. So that's 21, 30, plus another 17, 47 trample. Yeah, that's not gonna be enough, I'm afraid. Just needed to avoid Nissa. GG's. Well, the game played out kind of like we expected. And yeah, if we managed to make a few more ooze tokens, we might have been able to survive the attack. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, sadly we can't cast Pyre on turn 2 with our current mana. So, this one's a little sketchy. I think I got a mulligan. Okay, this is a bit better. We'll keep, and then the question is, do we Pyre on turn 2, or do we just go big with Hearth Elemental? 
yeah, I guess we'll just go with Hearth Elemental here. And then hope to find a third land and another Slime Against Humanity. Okay, founding is perfect. Start from chapter one. Cast our free adventure. Land lands, okay. So now we just need to find Slime Against Humanity. Plus on the final chapter we can cast one from the graveyard. Our opponent on a black-green graveyard deck. Alright, so... Mill four. Finding another two slimes. So if we already had a slime in hand, it would have been pretty huge. Sadly, we'll have to wait another turn. Although in the meantime, we can still uh, cast a cheap Hearth Elemental. We'll adventure this one. And there we go. So next turn we can cast one using the final chapter. And yep, opponent an Insidious Roots deck. And since Founding exiles the card and then casts it, it kind of still counts the copy itself. And we'll hit for four. Opponent likely to trump to trigger Hensidious Roots. Nope, takes it. Prowler is next. Milling a Dream Thief, which can also enable the roots. Could still attack with Hearth Elemental, but yep, opponent concedes. We can cast another Slime Against Humanity here. Make a nice large token, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Probably start with a blue-red land, since we might need double red for Hearth Elemental. And then, not sure yet what our turn 2 play is going to be. Most likely the Prankster. And then wait on Hearth Elemental for another turn. Put on black-white life gain, it seems. And we picked up another Elemental. Now I guess if I want a Prankster... I may not have a third lane for Hearth Elemental, but that's okay. We'll just prankster now. And then next turn we can reevaluate. Pilgrim is next. Death Dutch is pretty good against our Ooze tokens. Alright, find a slime. And another Prankster. Well, we could just keep on milling here. Surveil. Slime to the graveyard. And then, yeah, we'll just get the most value out of our cards. The bat we can maybe block with a 1-3. And Bartolome has a sacrifice outlet. Okay. We'll grab Pyre. And then we have to make a decision here. I could just Pyre cast a one mana Hearth Elemental. Don't hate that idea. And then could take out Bartolome because their opponent's unlikely to sank their entire board to it, which is the only way they survive three damage. And then we want to tap carefully. That works. And then a one mana elemental can hopefully stem the bleeding somewhat. The rest can take a slime, although we'll make future ones bigger. So not necessarily a bad thing for us. And a crawling chorus, that's fine. So this may be more of a sacrifice deck than a life gain deck. Happy to trade. And then now we can both slime and cast another hearth elemental. 
And then the next Hearth Elemental we might adventure first. So yeah, not hating my position. Playing it slow, getting value out of our adventure creatures seem to have paid off. Right of Oblivion. Okay, that's a good one. They can also flash it back next turn. Take care of another Ooze token. And Cathartic Pyre the draw. Okay. Well, we could once again just cast a Slime against Humanity and the one mana Hearth Elemental. Get on the board. Could also turn to Picklock Prankster as a blocker for the bait, which I'm not opposed to. And then for now, just hit for four. Question is whether we double Prankster or if we Cathartic Pyre something here. Don't mind double Prankster, actually. Vran definitely must answer. So we could uh, Pyre, Vran, and then cast Slime against Humanity, and then next turn we get to draw two. Seems good. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they know the contents of our hand mostly, and they don't think they can beat us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got two Surveil lands, so ideally we draw an untapped land on turn two, and maybe another one on turn three. Um, I think this is still keepable. Start with Thundering Falls. Slime in the graveyard is never a bad thing. And a Picnic Ruiner. That one's scary. So, if I get the chance, I want a Cathartic Pirate. Keep the land. Yeah, 3-3 three, three, Slime is probably not good enough here. This will now gain Double Strike, temporarily. We probably want to take out the Picnic Ruiner while the opponent's tapped out, otherwise we're just going to run into a Pump Spell. The alternative would be to just discard Double Slime and then next turn make a 5-5 five five token, but uh, with one Giant Growth, a 5-5 five five Double Strike can attack past it pretty easily. Partners is also a good target for Cathartic Pyre, but at this point we're falling behind pretty quickly. Okay, so we can cast a free Pyre here, starting from Chapter 1. Take another 5 at least, we're dead to any Haste Creature or Burn Spell. So yeah, keeping two tap lanes may not have paid off here, especially on the draw. And a Rampaging Raptor is gonna be game. Okay, just a little bit too slow out of the gates. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, sure, we've got a Keeper. Turn 2 we could already adventure, now I'm kind of interested in this Cathartic Pyre. Just discard Double Slime. Can do so at instant speed. And yeah, we're potentially up against Mono Green Aggro. Bloomkin could also kind of scale as the game progresses, so this is potentially worth taking out. So let's say we take out the Bloomkin. Then next turn I could adventure Hearth Elemental after playing a land, and then hope to draw more slimes, basically. Yeah, I could buy that. Alternatively, if I discard double slime, the next one we cast could be a 4-4, and I just need to draw an untap land for that to be the case. Still kind of a close call. Let's just take out the Bloomkin. Alright, so play the land. And then we're looking for more slimes. Okay, perfect. So next one's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. And then if we pick up a few more lands, we can also 
cast a cheap hearth elemental. Opponent with a new Archdruid's charm here to ramp. So they can already cast a 5 drop. It's going to be the Ferox, which is probably worth trading for if they offer. Since our tokens are only going to get bigger, opponents got a removal spell instead. Alright, so we take 7. If they've got another one of those, we could be dead. I could just play Hearth Elemental times 2, which is the safest play. Sure. So we're not necessarily dead to a removal spell. Oddity, another hasty 4-4. Four, four. Do we see an attack? Once they get to 7 mana, they can transform it, pumping the team. So I'm kind of happy to block while we can. Okay. So we're down to 5, and then we start making tokens. Not gonna attack yet, since I don't want to put myself dead to a haste creature. Another oddity. And our opponent's gonna hit the brakes. Okay, so we have to account for a transformed oddity. Turns into an 8-8 trampler. So we can still potentially withstand an attack. Blucronos. Can also transform. And this looks to be another fight effect. Okay. So they don't have any great attacks for now. I guess we cast a prankster, although I guess their team also gains trample. So let's see, are we dead? Yeah, if our opponent draws a land and transforms, can trade, soak up an attack and still die. So I kind of need the prankster to make sure that doesn't happen. And at the very least they can transform Polucronos. Now they can transform Oddity. Alright, goes for Polucronos first. No attack, and we can slime again. This has reach, so can't attack with a prankster. Oddity transforms. But yeah, they still don't have a great attack. Now all their creatures have haste, so that's pretty scary. Let's see if we can find another slime. We sure can. So it's a bit of a staring contest. But hopefully we can start attacking soon. Of course, Nissa is likely still game over. For now, Beast Caller is acceptable. And Founding can immediately go for another Slime. Which is probably the safest play. Even though we could mill more first. We'll leave that to the Prankster. Alright, so are we in a position to start attacking here? I would probably only attack with one creature. Bunt has a reasonable double block. So I don't think we're at that point yet. Of course, if we can take out the Behemoth, their team loses that bonus. So that wouldn't be a bad thing. And we don't want to give them the chance of top decking Nissa. Looks like they found another removal spell. Ooh, spinning wheel kick. Ouch. Yeah, that's uh, a nice 3 for one That was unexpected. But we still have some decent blocks lined up, so... Could have been a lot worse. So we take three, and Polychronos splits into a pair of tokens. So do we have a lethal if we were to attack with everyone? That's 32 damage. Opponent at a virtual 28 with 6 toughness. So it's not quite lethal. Unless we find Cathartic Pyre with a Prankster and kill the Lifelinker. 
So we'll try that first. Another slime. So at two life, we have to play it safe and play around another haste creature, so I can't really attack at all. Although, let's see. Yeah, even if I attack with two creatures, they can just take it. So just go to pass, and then next turn we can maybe attack all out. And our opponent explodes. So wow, that was a close one. So we got our revenge against Monogreen. Definitely a slightly different build as the one we faced before. So yeah, the deck performed better than expected. Now, of course, we're playing this in a more casual setting. I would not expect the deck to do well on the rank ladder, where decks like Monorad can run you over before you manage to set up. Any well-built control deck can handle your tokens no matter how large they are with spot removal and sweeper effects. And then cards like Atraxa are also very hard to get past and outrace. So there's a lot of problems when playing this in the rank ladder. The other potential problem when playing this deck is if you run into the new Deadly cover-up, which is a tailor-made answer to Slime Against Humanity, as it can exile every single copy in your deck. So hopefully you don't have to experience that, but that's also a very big problem. And uh, yeah, all in all, not the most competitive deck out there, but definitely a lot of fun and not too expensive to put together if you're playing this on Arena, because as soon as you have four copies of Slime Against Humanity, you can add as many copies to the deck as you want, and that's almost half of the deck. So outside of some of the rare lands, it's not too expensive to put together. Now, of course, if you're playing this in paper, cards like Slime Against Humanity tend to have a pretty high price tag, because players need to collect a lot of copies for their decks, so there's a lot of demand for it. But at least on Arena, you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.